around the like patch and stuff. Sort of gray. I saw it. Sort of gray. Sort of gray. Sort of Okay, um, so we talked about starting time about Fourier series last time, and um, and then I want to go through calculations of the coefficients show at least one example uh, and the different types of uh, go through the different types of. Um, Fourier series that there are calculations of the different coefficients. So the example is one from the textbook. So it's example 5.3. Um, I'll draw the waveform. Zero, one, that's the height of one. Two to three. Now, this is actually periodic and you know, minus infinity to infinity, so it continues forever. And then uh, it is convenient. To have an expression for x of t, and in this interval from one to two, it's just that's just the equation of a line for t between zero and one, and it's zero between one and two, um, and you can actually. We, we have to do our intervals over a period. Speaking of which, what is the period of this waveform? Is it one? So find two points that are alike, how far apart are they? Yeah. So from peak to peak here, or from this zero to that zero, they're two, two seconds apart. So what would be the fundamental frequency in Hertz? Remember that relationship? It's just, just one, over, one over the period. So that would be half a hertz. So, or omega zero is two pi over t zero, or two pi times f zero. So in this case, it would just be two pi times a half would be pi radians per second. But, so the sinusoidal frequencies that make up this waveform are the fundamental is that uh, half a hertz, the uh, harmonic is we call the second harmonic, the first harmonic is the same as the fundamental, the, the second harmonic would be at one hertz, one and a half hertz, two hertz, and then on and on and on. Only those frequencies, only those sinusoidal frequencies make up, make up this waveform. So for, for the trigonometric Fourier series, the formulas we had were A0 is one over T0. The integral, and it doesn't matter if you go from zero to two or minus one to one, especially it doesn't matter here. Um, you have to integrate over any T0 period. And this is just the average value. Uh, you can kind of see without actually doing the, the integral here. Now it's the average value over the entire period. For zero to one, that average value is one half, and then extend that over the full two seconds. It looks like it's got an average value of, of one quarter. Um, if you 
you know, plug in the values here, T zeros. Now here, I can reduce my limit instead of from zero to two, zero to one, because that's, that's the segment over which this is not zero. It's one minus T dt. And sure enough, I'm not gonna go through the details of that, it's a pretty simple interval, but you get one quarter. And you can almost get that by its spectrum. That one's the average value. So sometimes you can get that just from some simple geometry. Um, the a formulas for the AN, and it's, t, it's 2 over T0, the integral over any period of X of T cosine of N omega 0 T dt, or T0 is 1, so this becomes 1. We have 0. Again, my upper limit reduces to 1 because X of T is 0 from 1 to 2. And in this interval, it's 1 minus T cosine of N omega 0 T dt. And using a table of integrals or you know, Wolfram Alpha or um, integration by parts, you get the a n or one over n squared pi squared one minus cosine of n pi. Now, often when you're when you're working with these Fourier series. You'll get something like, you know, a term like cosine n pi or sine n pi or cosine n pi over two. So take a look at that because okay, that can often be simplified. Um, cosine of what's cosine of n pi when n is zero? Well, actually, we don't do that one. We've already got a zero. Our sum goes from one to infinity. What's cosine of n pi when n is one? Cosine of pi. It's negative one. It's cosine of two pi. That's not zero. It's one. Cosine of three pi. Negative one. It just flips back and forth between plus one and minus one. As a matter of fact, this is equivalent to minus one to the n power, right? When n is odd, uh, minus one to the n power would be minus one. When n is even, it's, it's plus one. So that's the same here. So you, you could write this as one over n squared pi squared, one minus, minus one to the n power. They're, they're equivalent. Is that okay? So, this is a general formula that gives us all the a, the a coefficients. A is 2 over pi squared. A2 is actually 0. Right? You've got 1 minus a plus 1 here. A3 is 2 over 9 pi squared. A4 is 0. As a matter of fact, you see that now An is 2 over n squared pi squared, because when n is odd, you've got 1 minus a minus 1, which is 2. So you get 2 over n squared pi squared. So I can write this like, like this. Or odd n. And it's 0 for n even. So okay. any questions about that? Okay. And not an easy interval at this point, but you can look it up to get this expression. So similarly, we, we do the same for the, the Bn, 0 to t0, x of t, sine of n omega 0 t, dt. I'm not going to go through all the steps there, but it's 1 over n pi is the result. So what you get here is B1 is 1 over pi, B2 is 1 over 2 pi, 
v3 is 1 over 3 pi, and so on and so forth. Which, putting all this together, means that x of t, the general formula we had was a0 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity of a n cosine of n mega zero t plus b n sine of n omega zero t. And this for this specific case that we worked, we've said that a zero is 0.25. We've got this general formula. Um, I'll probably use the one over n squared pi squared. 1 minus minus 1 to the n cosine of n. Omega 0 is pi. And then for bn, I had what, 1 over n pi. 1 over n pi sine of n pi t. Okay. It's a nasty looking expression. That's an infinite sum. Uh, fortunately, you do, you do have some computer tools that allow you to verify that you've done the calculation correctly. You could actually, you know, using octave, you know, take a two second interval, four second interval, T be a vector, actually sum up you can't do an infinite sum, but maybe sum up 40 terms. But there is, so in the, in the UE signal processing package, um, there are a couple of, this thing does a, a lot. Um, so there, <clears throat> there are some functions that'll do that sum for you, like this FS trig. Uh, two one. That's not the one I want. Um, I want this other one. This FS trig one. It does. It it will compute the the function at at different points using the coefficients from the trigonometric Fourier series. You notice here a zero is just a half. A n, I'm computing 40 terms. Okay. So that's a n is a vector, and it's got uh, here I computed it's just two over n times pi, um, um, and I'm just pulling out the odd values there squared. That's a little bit tricky, but the b n are just one over the n pi values. T0 is the period, which is 2. And then T is this vector. I just go from minus 2.2 to 3.2. And then just plot that. So this is, it also, um, so this is the original function, which I plot. And then this is plotting the function using 40 terms. And it's not exact. I, if I increase the value of, if I make this 100, which made it 1,000, but if I make it 100 and replot, you know, it looks more like the original, you know, as I use more and more terms. Turns out we can't actually get entirely away with this ringing that occurs at the discontinuity. But there's enough there to, to for me to know that or at least uh, have verif I verified that my expressions for a n and b n are correct. It looks like that this is the you know the sum using in this case a hundred different sinusoidal terms. Um, any questions about that? Yeah. The bones for AN, how did it become one? 
So T zero was two. Where where are we at? There. Here. T zero. The formula for a n is two over T zero. Yes, but then below that T zero becomes one. No, two over two becomes one. The bound. Oh, here. Yes. Okay. X of T is zero between one and two. So my interval from zero to two just is reduced to an interval from zero to one. So T zero is not changing to one. It's just my limit of integration. is just one there. Because I substitute in, in the function for X of T from here. X of T is non-zero from zero to one. I'm still integrating from zero. I could write this as plus the integral from one to two, right? I'm breaking the integral, integral, integral up, but from one to two, X of T is zero, so that interval is zero. And that BN, it automatically becomes that, BN. Yes. I didn't go through any of the steps there, but that's, you have to go through the same set of steps. It would be integral from zero to one of one minus T, but now sine of N omega zero T dt. And that evaluates to actually one over N pi. Now, um, the, our Fourier series actually is expressed a little more simply using what we call the compact trigonometric Fourier series. And here, X of T is C0 plus N equal one to infinity cosine of N omega zero T plus Dn. So really these are, these are two sinusoids at the same frequency n pi and n pi, so they could be combined into a new sinusoid. And you can use, actually use phasers to do that. You don't calculate the C0, the Cn, and the, and the Thn here directly. Instead, you have to go through the, the process of either getting them from the trigonometric Fourier series coefficients, the An and the Bn, or you can also get them from the complex Fourier series. But C0 here is just A0. And then Cn, Bn is An minus J, Bn. And in other words, you just form a complex number from your An and Bn coefficients. And the square root of the sum of the squares of that complex number would be the Cn. And the phase angle would be uh, of that complex number would be the, the, the Vn. So in, in this particular, so writing that down, we have Cn is An squared plus Vn squared, and Vn is minus the arc tangent of Vn over An. So in this particular case, Cn would be, we've got the two cases I, I combine differently for n odd and n even. n to the fourth pi to the fourth plus one over n squared pi squared to the one half for n odd. And it's just one over n pi for n even. And then the angle is minus and Bn over An, or writing that out, it's minus tangent or tangent of n pi over two for n odd, and it's minus pi over two for n even. So we can calculate these and it's a lot easier to use tool like MATLAB or Octave to do these, but you can 
do this on your calculator. C0 is A0. C1 is 0 0.5. Okay, so that's your calculation. And you could take these values I've got over here, for example, like um, A1 and B1. C1 is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of these. And then C2 would be, well, A2 is 0, but it would just be 1 over 2 pi. That's where I got those, those values for C. And then C3 is 0 0.108. And then corresponding angles are minus 57.5 degrees, minus 90 degrees, minus 78.1 degrees. Now, the, the reason we calculate those values for the, the compact trigonometric form is that a graph, we can make graphs of what are called the line spectra, which contain all this information about the sinusoidal components that make up this particular waveform. Um, so, for example, if I plot versus frequency and hertz, the CN, this is called the amplitude spectrum. C0 is, was 0.25. C1 is going to have Height of there, and then this is at half of hertz, half a hertz. We had a component at one hertz, and then a component at 1.5 hertz, and then a component at two hertz. Now these are the amplitudes of the sine wave components. And I just can't see over there on the on the board. 0 0.377, 0 0.159, 0 0.377, 0 0.159. A couple of things to notice though is that, and you can see this, this from the formulas over there, is that the amplitudes are getting smaller and smaller. And I took about, still took you know, about 40 of them to get a reasonable approximation to the, re, uh, to the actual original waveform. But the amplitude are getting, the amplitudes are getting smaller and smaller. So I, I don't really need this infinite sum, you know. Um, this shows in the amplitude of every component, the half hertz component has an amplitude of 0.377. So there's a lot of information here in the graph um, that I can get instead of using these, these formulas. I can go from this, these line spectra graphs actually to recreating the trigonometric Fourier series. This is a plot of the amplitudes. I also need the phase angles. That would be the plot of the, the phi ends as a function. So this is C0, C1, C2, so on and so forth. And then for the, the phase angles, this is what make, makes up what's known as the phase spectrum. The other thing this tells me is that you know, the, the fundamental is the strongest amplitude component. It kind of tells me, you know, here this is around half a hertz, but depending on the waveform, you know, this might be half a kilohertz or half a megahertz. And I can look at it and see where do I have the strongest amplitude components and, and say, well, those are where most of the frequency content of the signal is you know, by looking at by looking at these uh, spectra. So uh, B1 there was it was 50 minus 57.5 degrees. 
So this is minus 45, minus 90. Yeah, this is going to be about there. And this is at half a hertz. And P2 is at, at minus 90. P3. So from these values, I would say, for example, the component at one hertz is 0.159 cosine of 2 pi t, because the, the corresponding frequency is one hertz, 2 pi t, and then minus 90 degrees. Okay, so I can construct that term just from these two plots. C0 is here as well, the 0.25. Um, and it's easy to create these, these plots in MATLAB or Octave as well. I think, I think I've got an example that does that. Um, that was the one I had up here first. So this is actually, an, there's another function that uh, evaluates the Fourier series sum from the compact trigonom trigonometric coefficients, the C0, the Cn, and the phase angles here. Uh, so it, it plots both the approximate function and then the exact function for comparison, but then it also plots the line spectra. So let me run this. This gets, it's, this is a plot of the amplitude spectra. Again, this is showing the corresponding phase angles for this particular, for this particular waveform. The, the third form of the, of the Fourier series that we have is the exponential Fourier series. It's usually the simplest, but the problem with it is, I guess, is that it uses the Fourier series coefficients are complex. So it's got the, the simplest representation, n equal minus infinity to infinity of x of n e to the j n omega zero t. Yeah, from Euler's formula, we know that e to the j n omega zero t is actually cosine n omega zero t plus j sine n omega zero t. But this is a real function. So all of those imaginary terms in that summation have to sum to zero. As a matter of fact, that n equal minus one term is the complex conjugate of the n equal plus one term. Okay, so when you sum those, the imaginary part goes to zero. And the same is true for n equal minus two and n equal plus two. What's, what's nice about this too, you've only got one integral to find the X of N. Instead of you know, having different integrals for the A zero term, the A N term and the B N term, there's just one integral um, here you're integrating an exponential is involved instead of a trigonometric function. These tend to be easier to integrate, easier to integrate exponentials. And you, this, this would be done the same way, T0 is one. So again, I would decrease my lower limit to one here, one minus T of E to the minus J N omega zero, omega zero, here, what we said was pi dt. And then evaluate this integral as one over two pi squared 
n squared one minus j pi n minus e to the minus j pi n. Now, now this will simplify a bit. Again, always look for these exponential or trigonometric terms, e to the minus j pi n. And when, when n is one, that's going to be minus one. When n is two, that's going to be plus one. Okay. We can also break it down into We write it in, in terms of Euler's formula, we can write it as one minus cosine of minus pi n, but that's the same as pi n. This would be the real part. And then we would have minus for the uh, imaginary part, we'd have minus j times pi n. And then I've got minus the sine of a negative pi n, so that would make that a plus. But sine of pi n is always zero, for all values of n. So this reduces further to one over two pi squared n squared one minus cosine of pi n minus j pi n. So the x of n coefficients are complex, unlike for the trigonometric Fourier series, the real, for the uh, compact trigonometric, you're just dealing with real, you know, the cn or phi n. The xn, on the other hand, are complex value numbers. And this, Particular case, again, taking into account that cosine of pi n alternates between plus and minus one. This is one half at n equal to zero. It's one over pi squared n squared minus j, one over two pi n for n odd. And it's just minus j, one over two pi n for n even. Or it's helpful to, to calculate out a few points. Um, X of zero is actually one quarter, y over a half here. One quarter, X of one is a complex number. It's 0 0.189 in polar form at minus 57.5 degrees. X of minus 1, 0 0.189 at plus 57.5 degrees. X of 2 is 0 0.080 at an angle of minus 90 degrees. X of minus 2 is 0 0.080 at plus 90 degrees, and you don't really have to calculate the negative n terms if your function is real. They're always going to be the complex conjugate of the positive n terms. X of minus two is always going to have just the negative angle of X of plus two. So, If x of t is real, mathematically, you would write x of so that, that asterisk operator there is the complex conjugate. x of minus n is the complex conjugate of plus x of n. Um, can you, you can make line plots of the x of n coefficients. The difference here with the line plots here you make with the, the uh, complex coefficients is that um, n is both 
positive and negative here. So you end up with what are known as the two-sided spectra. So here you would have at zero, have the 0 0.25 component at one, that's actually at half a hertz, 6.189. Minus half, it's the same. Here it's smaller, smaller. The amplitude spectra is always an even function because of this relationship. They have the same magnitude, but at a different phase angle. This, this is still, it's still called the amplitude spectrum. But because it involves these negative frequencies, you know it's a line spectrum from the complex exponential representation. And you can do the same for the phase spectrum. It's two-sided also, but it would actually have odd symmetry. Here it's minus 57.5 degrees, but at the, the negative one term would be plus 57 minus 90 and plus 90 when you plotted when you plotted those terms there there is another function available in this in this package for plotting the Fourier series using the complex coefficients, and it's the simplest one. It, it just takes the vector of the, of the X of N. Um, and here, just it just takes the one-sided, the positive values, and it relies on the, on the symmetry there. So um, here, I just took the positive values from zero out to 40 again, uh, and then using that representation. But it, it produces exactly the same result. And then this, this also plots the amplitude and, and phase spectra just um, from those uh, formulas for the, for the X, X of N. Okay. The final thing I'll, I'll give you here is just, I'll, I'll squeeze it in this area, is the relationships between the Fourier series coefficients. Um, X, well, the X of N formula, which is one over T zero, T zero X of T, E to the minus J N omega zero T E T. And using Euler's formula, we can write that as one over T zero, T zero X of T, cosine of n omega zero t dt. Got rid of the minus sign there because cosine of minus n omega zero t is the same as cosine as plus n. And then we have minus the sign, minus one over t zero, t zero x of t sine of n omega zero t dt. Well, this is actually just one half of A of N. Okay, Evan had a two there. This is one half of B of N. So the, the X of N Fourier series coefficients are one half A N minus, uh, I forgot my J here, minus J one half B N. So actually what this says, is that my an coefficients over there are just the real parts of these coefficients times a half. Okay. So for n odd, my a of n should be should be one over two pi squared n squared. Hopefully that's what I've got got written down Yeah, remember. For n odd, remember this is uh, I've got a two here, so this the, um, so 
um, um, what I get over here. Organon should be the real part of that. And I just screwed that up, didn't I? Uh, this is one half of a n. That's right. One half of e n. So I'm getting a one should be one half the real part of this. Is it? Looks like I'm getting a, a, an extra two over there. Well, I think the, the relationship here is right. Whether or not, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm missing a factor of a two here in my work on the board. But this is also one half CN phi N. And then we also have X zero, A zero, C zero, or N equal to zero. So, in other words, you should be able to jump back and forth between these um, different forms of the Fourier series just using those simple relationships. You certainly don't have to go through all the, the work that I went through of computing it in all, in all three different forms. The recommendation is usually the exponential Fourier series is, is going to be the, the simplest to compute. And then if you want the other representations, you, you can get them from these formulas. Uh, in the textbook, he's got a table of a bunch of common Fourier series. So you can use that table to help you out um, in, some of the, in some of the homework problems. Um, and then he, he's, he's also got these relationships actually listed in a table in the textbook too. That's, I think, all I've got for you today. So, we'll start looking at Fourier transforms, which are a little easier actually. Fourier series. I'm sorry.